On tonight's episode, I pretend to read a book. I do some housekeeping and I stir the spicy soup. Straight back into where we left off in the last video. Enjoy. And there we have it. The design for the barrel is all printed and it is all glued together and is ready to be put in a flask. So next I need to actually make a flask because frankly the flask for the cylinder head is way too big and I'd just be kissing off a whole bunch of investment which I cannot afford to do. So it'll be over to the engineering bay, cut out some stainless sheet, make a nice tidy box that is a snug-ish fit and um, weld it all together. There we go, that's my stainless flask ready to go. Um, I almost ran out of gas, so it's got some temporary wee legs on it just to keep it stable while it's upright. Now, what's the bet? How many holes? I reckon two. So far, so good. Nah, no way there's not a hole in this. Ah, oh, <laughs> there's one hole over there. Here we go, take two, welded that up. Technically it wasn't a hole in my weld, it was a spot that I actually missed welding, but uh, I suppose it still counts. Wow, unfortunately the recording for making this mold failed, but kind of thankfully it failed because my god was it a mess and everything went wrong that could go wrong and I don't think this mold is usable unfortunately, so time to smash all this crap out. Well, that's one way to destroy two perfectly good bricks. But anyway, got this bloody thing out now. So I think this here is the biggest problem. Our water jacket hole is right next to the edge of the mold, which is definitely an oversight on my part. I really should have had it at least 10 mil away from the edge of the mold, allowing the investment to flow in, fill up the water jacket. And yeah, I noticed when it was filling that it wasn't filling properly and I was like, ah, oh, crap. Here we are, day later. 3D printer has done its work and we have another positive and yeah I had some spare time so I went and got some more argon. I've welded some handle mounts on so I can put the handle on top. I've made some proper legs because those welding wire ones were flimsy and I don't even know why I thought they would work. So yeah this time. There we go, that is the mold all done, and yeah, it is critical that I do not touch it, so I'm just gonna have to leave it exactly where it is, um, and then yeah, tomorrow morning I can take the, you know, put it upside down in the kiln and start burning it out very slowly, um, and yeah, hopefully, fingers crossed, it should be super strong mold. While that investment is curing, I thought I'd show you another part of the project, which is the crankshaft, and essentially, I did some CAD a while ago um, on the crank, sort of designing it, but it's not quite uh, standard CAD, it's actually a cardboard aided design which yeah I'm not sure why I did it, I think I did this at a lunch break um, but essentially I just yeah I had a crankshaft and I just took a whole bunch of measurements off it because essentially I'm combining two different cranks so the outsides these will still be roller bearings like the FXR crank it'll still have the same drive and the same taper but the, the middle section will have a plane bearing to take the R6 rod and piston and these here, so this is actually a join here, and I'm planning on making these weights removable. And I was thinking, it would be pretty cool to make these counterweights out of solid, uh, say, tungsten or depleted uranium, but the likelihood I can get my hands on those materials and actually know what to do with them and have the stuff to actually machine them properly is highly unlikely. There we go, that is our mold burnout cycle done. It's been on pretty much all day yesterday, about 12 hours, and yeah, it's been cooling down overnight, so now it's hot enough, cold enough, I mean, that I can touch it. So let's very carefully lift this out and uh, see if we've got a usable mold. Water jacket is where it's supposed to be, I don't know if you can see that. And with a little bit of compressed air, getting rid of the dust and ash out of the mold, so she's ready to pour. Water. 
Jane Cage. There's a smidge over the right weight, but it's too long, so I need to cut that in half. Two point two seven, two point two seven. Now let's see if I can fit it in the crucible. There we go. Fits like a glove. just liquid so now I'm going to start checking the temperature I've given about an hour and a half so let's go uh, cool it off and dig it out it's still very hot Now let's clean up this casting and see what needs improving. Well there we have it, that is our first attempt at casting a barrel and I say attempt because as you can see we have plenty of odd wee imperfections. Um, the main two causes for these, so as I was worried about the water jacket core moved, uh, it must have moved during the pour because um, after the burnout um, it was still in position there was no cracks in it and so yeah it's a bit of a bugger but oh well and the other one is you can sort of see there's heaps of little areas around it which aren't filled up now I was a little confused to why that was but I think I figured it out so I'll show you this so my theory to why the thin sections aren't filling up is essentially the thick section next to it is stealing all the aluminium leaving the thin one not filling up properly and so my plan is I'm going to add one mil to the wall thickness of the thin sections. And so that should fix that problem and then to try stop the core moving the water jacket entry or exit here is supporting it somewhat on this side um, so I'm thinking I might add a temporary sort of hole through here um, that's got some extra meat around it and it goes in there and supports the water jacket on this side. I've been busy and hopefully we're ready for round two. The aluminium is cut, measured and weighed. It is all ready to go in there. And then the kiln has been cranking away. It's just finished the burnout cycle. And so that is ready to go. The mold's in there. I've given it a blowout with the compressed air. It is nice and clean. There's a few cracks in it, but it looks like it's in one piece. So yeah, now we're gonna crank out the furnace and um, hopefully we'll be casting in about an hour. The furnace is cranking away and we are approaching casting, or at least melting temperature, we're at 650 degrees celsius so far. I'm going to start putting on some of my safety gear and yeah, hopefully all goes smooth. Very hot in there, trying not to melt my phone. <laughs> I'm all out of new aluminium for casting attempt number three, so all of this is going to be recycled parts from previous castings. Cleaning up my drossing tools with a hammer.
Here we are back at the table again and we have this casting here which I've already shown you, the core moved, it's got a bunch of holes in it, not quite usable but a decent attempt. I've just dug out the next attempt and this one looks usable, it is a little ugly I'm not going to lie, I may or may not have forgot to use the hot topping um, just as a bit of an experiment, it was kind of intentional and now I'm regretting it. But anyway so it's got a little bit of surface shrinkage all over it but it does sound pretty solid and I think it will be usable but I was thinking to myself surely I can do better than this and um, I actually could believe it or not I think I have a completely usable barrel in my hand but yes yeah, so I did update the CAD between all three versions um, the last one I mainly messed around with the cam chain gallery so on the second lot of the CAD I thickened up all the walls so we weren't going to get any uh, thin spots and <laughs> as a bit of a joke I put legal cc instead of the 157 cc that used to be on it because that's technically within the class regulations which i'm building the race bike for and just my luck because i yeah <laughs> i didn't think this is going to be a success and i thought i was just going to remake it and i was just going to put 157 i'd put this on the shelf and i'd chuckle every time i see it and now it's actually going to be on the engine and i'm going to have to live with that but that's all right oh wow well. Yeah, so all I've got to do is this here, I'll make a wee plug for it, I'll weld that up because this is the water jacket uh, in and then it'll go out up to the cylinder head. Um, that was just to help support the core, which it did its job. And then, yeah, there's a whole bunch of machining. I've obviously got to cut the main riser off. And yeah, this barrel is pretty good. As you can see, we have a bunch of supports in the cam chain gallery because there's one thing I did forget on the last two attempts. So luckily this one can actually be properly heat treated and we shouldn't have any distortion in the cam chain gallery. And oh, I'm just, I'm over the moon. I only took three attempts, which is a lot quicker than it took for the cylinder head. I'll tell you that but you guys know that I don't need to tell you so now we have a totally viable barrel we have a cylinder head which should be pretty good it just needs more machining same as this um, I'm started work on the crankshaft so that that'll be in the next video I need to make camshafts as well I need to make the cam caps so the cam caps will be soonish that's probably the last major thing to be cast I'm thinking a carbon fiber cam cover which I was thinking would be super cool, super lightweight. I have a friend in Australia who's an expert at building carbon fibre parts for bikes. Um, and so I'm hoping he might be able to help me out there. Wink, wink. And, <laughs> and yeah. But I've just been told that it's bin night, so I'm going to go take the bins out. And on that note, this has been Logan from the Motorcycle Forge. I hope you enjoyed, and I'll catch you next time.